Okay, so this is something of a pilot for a series I've wanted to do for a long time on video game covers, their history, and the big names behind some of the more classic works of video game box art. Now, there have been plenty of think pieces about the state of video game box art in the 21st century, mostly along the lines of, is video game box art better or worse than it was 30 years ago? The cover for Aid in Bethesda's 2016 Doom reboot was famously so maligned that Bethesda made an 11th hour decision to make the sleeve art for the physical release of the game reversible. The reversible art, which harkened back to the very first Doom cover from the early 90s, was so much more popular than the original box art that it became the de facto official art for all future releases of the title. And 2020's Doom Eternal doubled down on Doom's box art redo, providing even more wonderfully illustrated demonicide to fans of the franchise. And while there has been plenty of great video game box art that could be classified more broadly as graphic design, there's just something about illustration that catches the eye in a different way than something made in Photoshop or Illustrator. And before we get much further in this video, I want to say that I'm not taking a stance that any one of these methods of art design is better than the other, only that for the purposes of this video we won't be focusing on much quote-unquote modern video game art but on some of the great illustrative work of early video game covers, namely those of British artist Roger Dean. The name Roger Dean means different things to different people. For some, he's the man responsible for setting the aesthetic of 70s and 80s progressive rock albums, lending his art to covers for bands like Yes, Uriah Heep, Asia, Focus, Gentle Giant, and even the London Philharmonic Orchestra. For others, he's an architect, creating new and exciting spaces for people to live and work in. To others still, his name can be seen on a baseball stadium in Jupiter, Florida, though those people would not be referring to the same Roger Dean we'll be talking about in this video. And for a final group, Roger Dean is the creator of some of the best video game box art of all time. So from my understanding of it, having only read about it and not lived through it, the early days of video games were a wild west of sorts, an untamed land that no one quite yet knew what to do with. British developer Cygnosis wanted to tame that wilderness, specifically in how their video games were marketed. And they had one person in mind to get the job done. Roger Dean. Looking back on this area of development, Digital Eclipse studio head Mike Mika said this in an interview with Polygon. Cygnosis' theory of marketing was that they wanted box art that was every bit as beautiful as the games they produced. They were one of the first companies to put a stake in the ground and claim that games were art. By aligning themselves with Roger Dean, Cygnosis not only found a way to stand out and not look like any other game on the shelf, they also inherited, by association, the prestige that came along with Roger's work. And that prestige at that time was several decades worth of jaw-dropping album covers, spread across millions of records all over the world, and a handful of instantly recognizable logos, chief among them the famous bubble logo for Yes, and a rather trippy logo for Virgin Records, cited as a favorite piece of Wilmot's Warehouse creator Richard Hogg, so there's some bonus video game trivia for you. People sought out Dean because they wanted his unique vision. His work had an unspeakable beauty, an indelible quality that drew the viewer into the piece in ways that few others at the time could. And so the first step in Cygnosis' quest to tame the desolate wastes of video game marketing was for Dean to design a new logo for the company, to which Dean delivered the now famous Cygnosis Owl. This logo, in one form or another, would appear on Cygnosis games until the bitter end, when in 2000, Cygnosis was rebranded as SCE Studios Liverpool by new owner Sony Computer Entertainment. But in the decade plus before the buyout, Dean would deliver Cygnosis some of their most memorable box art, and arguably some of the most memorable box art of the era. Dean designed the covers of games like 1985's Bertakis, 1986's Deep Space and Shadow of the Beast, 1987's Barbarian, and 1988's Obliterator, amongst others. And though he would only directly work on a few other covers for Cygnosis' now expansive library of games, Dean's work on those early titles all but inexorably bound his aesthetic to the Cygnosis catalog, and myriad future artists commissioned by Cygnosis couldn't help but show off Dean's influence in their own work. Everything from color palette to composition, to even the fonts of the game titles, exuded Dean's influence, even when his name wasn't anywhere else on the box. 
And even after Sony's 2000 rebrand of Cygnosis, Dean's work had such staying power that in 2016, a Cygnosis Amiga game generator popped up on the internet courtesy of Rob Bashiza, which, per his own description, combines a random cygnosis game name, which he says is something equal parts concise, literary, and antediluvian, with a randomly picked work of art by Roger Dean and the classic Cygnosis box art rap. However, all this work for Cygnosis pales to what is likely the most recognizable contribution Dean made to the world of video games, the Tetris logo. In the late 90s, the rights for Tetris reverted back to the original creator of the game, Alexei Pajitnov, who upon receiving the rights to the game subsequently brought all things Tetris under the new umbrella of the Tetris Company and commissioned Dean for a new logo to bring Tetris into the modern era. Dean's Tetris logo has since appeared on almost every Tetris title since then. 2001's Tetris Worlds even used a painting of Dean's along with the logo, and served as the official Tetris logo until June of 2019, when a new version of the logo was rolled out for the game's 35th anniversary. One that pays homage to Dean's work, but gives Tetris a sleeker look for the modern era. But that was the last time Roger Dean would formally work in the world of video games, at least until 2012 when Dean teamed up with the developers at Motion to release his own mobile game called Dragon's Dream featuring his own art and designs. So why was Dean's work so absent from the video game scene for more than a decade? Well, I think it might have something to do with the industry shift away from illustrated covers. But like I said at the beginning of the video, there's been more than enough think pieces about why this or that shift happened in the world of game art, so I'm not going to touch on any of that here. What I will do is share some of Roger Dean's own words on the subject, specifically a quote from an interview with itsnicethat.com about his work and the state of modern graphic design. Now, the quote is in the context of a discussion of album covers, but it could easily be a quote about video game box art. I like that otherness, and I try to achieve it. When you look at a lot of modern album covers, the art school obsession with Helvetica kind of undermines it. So instead of looking at an artifact that comes from another place entirely, you are looking at an artifact that has been caught and tamed and made corporate. The thing that I'm concerned about is the very simple dogma of modern design and how it undermines quality in a surprising way. And it applies to graphic design, architecture, everything. That unbelievable necessity to strip everything down to its simplest form. I think it's against nature. It's a kind of religious zealotry. Now, in the context of Dean's own work, nowhere can this Helvetica approach to design be seen than in the 2016 reimagining of Cygnosis Shadow of the Beast. To look at the 2016 cover art next to Dean's 1986 version, I can't really even get into how much I'm not okay with it. Now, I was lucky enough to meet Roger Dean in 2018 at an art exhibition in Palm Beach and saw some of his works in person, and it was an exhilarating experience. None of the originals of his video game works were on display there, but there were plenty I recognized from my own music collection. There's just something about seeing these images that you've only ever seen the size of a CD or maybe a record in their original form that can't really be captured in words. It was incredibly inspiring, and I know I'm not the only one that feels that way about his work. With legendary developers like Yu Suzuki citing Dean as an inspiration for Space Harrier, and former Ubisoft art director Pascal Blanche regularly singing Dean's praises on Twitter, even noting it was Dean's covers for Cygnosis that first introduced him to Dean's work, it's difficult to know just how widespread Dean's influence really is, but it is undoubtedly far. A 2002 documentary about Roger's work even talks about how folks within the design department at Lucasfilm were passing around one of Roger's books during the development of the first Star Wars film in 1977. More recently, Dean's work was even involved in a somewhat high-profile lawsuit against Avatar director James Cameron, claiming that much of the world of Cameron's Pandora was lifted from Dean's own work. Regardless, Roger Dean has had undeniable influence on all sorts of art forms. There are a few permanent displays of Dean's work around the world, but he's actually been traveling more in recent years, giving more people an opportunity to see his works in the flesh. Now, if you're a fan of Cygnosis, old Amiga games, 70s prog rock, or even if you're someone who's hearing about Roger Dean for the first time because of this video, I'd implore you to seek out his works in person. You won't regret it. Everyone at some point says, where do you get your ideas from? The best way to work is study, Fill your mind with great thoughts, read books, look at things, get rid of the thinking so that the ideas can flow. 
the real enemy of creativity is anxiety about your work. You have to learn to care, but not to worry. And then the ideas will do their job for you. Hey everybody, this is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.